Good morning, everybody. Boy, we have a fun day today. Uh, after we finish chores, Grace and I are going to preserve some of our spring harvest and then we're gonna go pick up the little piggies. It's gonna be a fun day, but first we need to finish chores. I need to milk goats. Now we can let the baby out. Let your baby out. Come on. Okay, I got my milk. All the animals are fed and watered. So now I need to get inside, strain this milk, and then Grace and I can get started on putting up some of our spring harvest into the freezer for winter. Today, Grace and I are working on blanching and freezing some of the veggies that we pulled out of the garden. These are sugar snapped peas and we have not eaten everything fresh that we have gotten from the garden. So today we're gonna blanch and freeze them so that we can use them throughout the year in our stir fries and things like that. Last week I did a video where I showed how to blanch and freeze turnips and I talked about why we blanch before we freeze. But I just wanted to review again, just real quickly, what blanching is and why you may want to do it before you freeze some of your produce. Now, veggies, fresh veggies have an enzyme inside of them that the longer they're out of the garden, they will start to decompose, degrade, or uh, kind of make the quality less desirable in your veggies and that still happens when you freeze them so blanching them before you freeze them or blanching is really partially cooking them or parboiling them uh, before you freeze them that stops that enzyme from working uh, it essentially kills that enzyme so that um, the quality of your veggies is still really good not everybody blanches before they freeze and that's really a personal choice and not every type of vegetable that you want to freeze in the freezer is required to be blanched so i'm going to put a link to a website that has a really nice chart i'll put that in the description section below not only will it tell you what veggies should be blanched before you freeze them but will also tell you how long they should be plunged into the boiling water now, blanching is essentially putting your vegetables in boiling water for a certain amount of minutes, and then you take them out and drain all the water out and plunge them into cold water or icy water to stop the cooking process. And then after you drain the water really well, you can freeze it in freezer bags or however you choose to freeze it. So today we're starting off working on these sugar snap peas. And if we have time, we'll uh, start working on other things. So I have my pot of boiling water here, and I'm just going to put some of these peas down in my strainer pot. I guess this is a pasta pot. Until I have about an inch or so of vegetables down in there. I'm gonna lift off the lid put that pot right in the boiling water. Cover it back up. And once this reaches a boil again, I'm gonna have them boiling here, cooking here for a minute and a half. They're done in the pot. So now we need to 
take them out of there and put them in some cold water or ice water. And we'll leave them in there until they cool down. This type of a pot works so well for blanching. And then right away we're just going to put more peas in. out and now I'm going to put them in the salad spinner to drain out the extra water. I'd make you look good. <laughs> So we are moving on to blanching and freezing some of this cauliflower. We're actually going to do all of these heads. This is less than half of what we still have in the refrigerator uh, to either eat fresh or, you know, before we preserve anyway. Um, or I think I'm going to do some pickling of these. I'm going to make spicy pickled cauliflower, which is our family favorite and one of my ultimate favorites. And then I also might do an experiment with fermenting some of this. I've heard it's really good. Uh, but today we're going to take care of all of these. Now, I do want to tell you that this cauliflower has been in the refrigerator double wrapped for about a week. And there's absolutely no sign of uh, deterioration like you see in the grocery store. It makes me wonder how long the cauliflower in the grocery store has been like out of the field before we take it home and eat it. But these guys, are gorgeous they're in great shape and i can't wait to get these preserved so we can use them the rest of the year we will be growing another batch of cauliflower in our fall garden so if we eat all of this up in a hurry i think we'll still have an opportunity to grow more for over the winter so we're going to blanch these just like everything else we're going to cut these into smaller pieces, obviously, but not so small that they're not going to maintain some kind of girth uh, when we put them in the freezer. The main way that we prepare these after they've come out of the freezer is to roast them in the oven just with a little oil and uh, some salt and pepper. I think that that is one of the best ways to use frozen thawed cauliflower. We absolutely love it. The taste is amazing. And then if there's any kind of moisture or too much moisture from the freezing process, it just kind of gets cooked off in the oven. So anyway, we're going to get cutting this up so we can get them blanched and in the freezer. Those cauliflower heads gave us two big bowls of cut up cauliflower. Getting those two things blanched and in the freezer is a good job done for us. We need to move on to some other things, but we're pleased that this amount of food is going into the freezer for our family. The sugar snap peas ended up being four meals worth that we can add into a stir fry. 
And the cauliflower ended up being four big meals worth for dinner coming up. And I'm really happy about that. But I need to get these into the freezer. Well, we just got a phone call from the person who we're buying the pigs from saying that they are ready for us to come and get them. So we're going to hop in the car. We're going to drive to get them. It's about an hour drive to where we're getting them. So we've got the trailer loaded up. We're just taking our small trailer with some dog kennels in the back. I think that'll be fine for the pigs. And we're going to try to get them back home. It's warm out today, but it's starting to be toward evening. So I think it'll be fine. Uh, we just want to get them back so they can be back in the woods where it's nice and cool. Well, we're back with the pigs. It was quite an adventure. Uh, they're not very tame, uh, but that's okay. Uh, most of the pigs that we get when we get them as feeder pigs, they're not tame to start and they'll tame up just fine. Uh, they're also a little bit bigger than we uh, thought they would be, uh, which is good uh, because we're a couple weeks later this year getting them than we were last year. And these guys are a couple weeks ahead of where we were last year. So that's perfect. So. Uh, it's been kind of a bumpy, windy ride home. Uh, they look like they're resting well low in their cage. We're going to unhook the trailer, hook it up to the ATV so I can pull it back to their pen area, and then we're just going to get them all settled in for the night, and hopefully uh, everything will just go smoothly. brought some straw from the barn <laughs> and we're gonna put it in their little house area to make a nice little soft bed for them. Should make their first night a cozy one. That's good, I think they'll really like that. Well, we got them in. <laughs> it was a little bit of squealing and kicking, but it doesn't hurt them. It, they put on a good show. Um, but you can see, now that they're in, they're already settling in well. Looks like they're doing well. These are some gorgeous pigs. I'm really excited to have these. Now, this year, uh, these pigs are Hampshire and Landrace mix. Uh, the Landrace are a European pig that are a longer pig, so uh, I think these guys will produce some really good bacon uh, and some good chops. So I'm really excited. We have the electric wire on. I see one of them just already tested it out. Now they did have some electric wire at the place that we got them from, uh, but we're still going to use it inside their pen here for a while to really make sure they're trained before we let them loose back here in the woods. So they'll be in this pen for a few weeks at least until 
they tame up and they get to know us and we get to know them and they and that we know for sure that they respect the electric wire Bailey. Yeah. the fence is on oh you can jump you can walk I over they're it gonna be bigger than that they're cute of course they're other pigs Like so black long. They are, they're like little hot dogs. That, like, red, I like the brown the one. The red one has like a stripe of yeah. gray. Those are, they're so pretty. They're prettier than last year's. They are. We're going to be keeping, not, not the black one that's laying down or the black one, or the red one, but we're going to keep the other black one. The one with all the different spots on it. So this year we've decided to only keep one of the pigs for ourselves. Two was just too many with all the other meat sources that we have on the homestead. So uh, two of these pigs will be coming up for sale. I'll be reaching out to some of you. I know a few of you have reached out to us asking if we'd be willing to raise a pig for you. I'll be getting back to you guys soon. I need to do some nerdy pig math first and figure everything out. But I'll be in touch real soon. So if you've contacted us, be watching your email. So I am gonna give them some feed tonight. And uh, then I'll prop open the door of one of their feeders so they know where it is because they haven't had a feeder like this before. They were just being fed out of trough. But they'll catch on fast. Now we're feeding a, a pig and sow feed from our local feed mill. And uh, it's what we raised our pigs on last year and it did really well. Now there's a good chance that they won't even want to eat until morning. It's been a pretty stressful day for them. But I want feed in these feeders in case they come around investigating them. There's something in it. They know what it is right away and they don't just root it up and destroy it. Well the pigs are settling in well. We've been home now for, I don't know, 45 minutes or so and they're really just ready to take a rest. It's been a stressful day for them uh, being first, you know, caught at the uh, breeder's house and now being brought here. So they had an hour long drive in a trailer. I mean, a big day for a pig. So they're ready to just be here and chill out and act like pigs for a while. We're so excited to have these guys on the homestead and we're excited to bring you guys along so you can see them grow up. You guys, if you enjoyed this video and you're not a subscriber yet, please consider subscribing. We would love to have you along. Um, also share this with people that you think would also enjoy our channel. And until next time, thank you so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.